this project was so long and so complicated and so involved, I thought I would start with it. Just a few words of introduction. It had its origins on June 21, 1966. I know that because I found this receipt for the original purchase in the bottom of the box. I also found the original owner's manual. And what a joy this was to read. As soon as you open it, full of information, it is wonderfully illustrated in correct colloquial grammatical English. The booklet is in English only, although the product was produced in Austria and purchased in bilingual Canada. Zero words about safety anywhere, as is appropriate for a product which cannot possibly harm anybody unless they're extraordinarily foolish. The movies were all shot using Super 8 cartridges. This was a technology introduced by Kodak in 1965, just a year before I started shooting. After shooting the cartridge, you waited eagerly in the mail for the return of the little 50-foot roll, which uh, looked like this. Eight of these were spliced together on one 400-foot reel, which lasted 27 minutes. Load on the projector, and away we go. Mother thought it was a great idea to keep the characteristic click of the projector as uh, 18 frames were fed through per second. Now to digitize the movies. We start surprisingly at the North Pole. I spent a great deal of effort looking for a suitable screen. What I eventually came up with was the back of one of our pictures painted with three coats of the same matte paint that was used to paint the garage. The screen sits on this table I made for my router. The projector sits there. The camera sits here. One big problem in digitizing movies by using your digital camera to shoot the pictures from the projected images on a screen is that the projector shows them at 18 frames per second whereas your digital camera works at 15 frames per second. This mismatch leads to some images having more than one frame in them and other images having lots of shutter in them so that you get an undulating bright and darkness pattern which can be very annoying to watch. A former colleague at General Motors, Steve Rode, introduced me to some marvelous Russian software that did a passable job at smoothing out this flicker. This was called Virtual Dub. It took a very long time to run because it adjusted the brightness of every frame upwards or downwards to get a smoother brightness. This report shows that I started running at 4 minutes after 10 on Sunday, November 7. It finished running at 10 minutes to 4 the next morning. I hope you enjoy the movies.